Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where OP helps a girl get revenge against her cheating, lying ex. Our next Reddit post is from Anonymous Annie. I worked as a front desk agent in a large luxury hotel chain for some years. One particular hotel I worked at was located really close to the downtown area, and so we got a large number of young, very wealthy business people who loved to party. I usually worked the second and third shifts, which meant that I got to see loads of drunken hookups, breakups, cheating, hookers, and more. This particular one though, this is one I will never forget. I was working at the desk when a group of young, well-dressed men came walking in. They've all clearly been drinking, but aren't so drunk that they can't walk right and hold a conversation. One of them comes up to me and tells me that while he and his friends were at the bar, a woman was hitting on him, and even though he told her no multiple times, she wouldn't stop. So he and his friends left, and it wasn't until they got in the Uber that they realized that he didn't have his room key anymore. He thinks she took it, and he's concerned that she may have come up to his room. He asks that I deactivate his keys, and if she does come up to the hotel, to not let her in. When he was telling me all of this, it didn't sit right with me. He and his friends were all grinning about it and snickering amongst one another. Then, he gave a clear description of her without being asked. He told me her height, body shape, hair color and style, and the kind of dress she was wearing, all while saying it in a mocking tone. Now, this could have easily been because he thought the whole thing was ridiculous or was too drunk to take it seriously, but it really didn't sound right to me. Either way, I did as I was trained in that situation. I pulled up his reservation, deactivated the keys as requested, made him a new set when he showed me ID, and even offered to move him to a new room if that would make him feel more comfortable. He and his buddies all laughed a little at that, and he declined, took the keys and they went to the room. About an hour or so later, the woman he described shows up. Now, by this point, my replacement for the night had also shown up and they were sitting at the front desk while I was in the back office counting down my cash drawer. I hadn't had the chance to tell my replacement about the woman. Just as I'm walking out the back office with my bag and about to leave, I see my coworker buzz the doors open and the woman comes rushing in, cuts through the lobby and down the hall to the elevators. She was barefoot holding her heels in her hand and knew exactly where she was going. I rushed up to him and told him what the man from before had told me about her. My coworker looked at me confused. He then pointed to the screen that had the reservation pulled up and told me that when the woman arrived, she went to use the room keys and they didn't work. So he asked for her room number and last name. She gave both and her name is on the reservation. I looked at the reservation and down in the notes, there was a woman's name listed. The man from before was listed as a primary, but her name was listed as secondary with his consent to be in the room. I was confused. I thought maybe she wasn't the same woman he was talking about. But to be on the safe side, I called the man in his room and told him the situation and that we allowed a woman fitting the description he gave to enter the building because she confirmed her name was on the room. He laughed, said he forgot her name was on the room, and asked that I remove it. I was now super confused, so I asked to make sure. Sir, just to be clear, the woman you met at the bar tonight was with you at check-in hours ago and was allowed keys then, but now she isn't? I hear him laugh to all of his friends in the room. Aw, oh, guys, I confused the poor girl. He gets back on the phone with me. Yes, yeah, sweetheart, she's banned from the room. Don't worry about the other details, just take her name off. I see. Then, if she isn't going to be on the room anymore, would you like us to call the police and have her removed from the property? Haha, <laughs> whoa, that's too far there. Don't worry, she'll get the hint soon enough. We ended the call there, and I got really suspicious of this. I told my coworker to not do anything, and that I was going to stick around for a bit to see if anything happens. A short time later, the woman came off the elevator, pouring tears, sobbing while on the phone with someone. She sat down in our lobby, and my coworker and I tried to look busy while eavesdropping hard on her phone call. She was sobbing on the phone to her mom and sister. From what she told them, she was invited out to spend the week with her boyfriend meeting all of his old college buddies. This being their first night, they all met up for dinner and drinks. After a bit, she went to the restroom, and when she came back, she caught her boyfriend hitting on another woman. His friends all bet that he wouldn't do it. When she confronted him pissed off, he called her a bunch of names and humiliated her in front of his friends in the entire bar. All of his friends joined in on mocking her and he threw in her face that she was nothing without him and dumped her right there. He and his friends then took an Uber back and left her stranded at the bar with no money and no way back. 
She then had to use her phone's GPS and walk back to the hotel from the bar, barefoot. She had heels, but walking two miles in those was not going to cut it. She was asking her mom and sister for help, as he wouldn't let her in the room to get her luggage or her wallet. My heart broke. I felt horrible. I helped this guy treat this poor woman like garbage, and now he and all his friends were up there laughing at her while she's sitting in our lobby sobbing and with nothing. I went over to our snacks area in the lobby, grabbed her a bottled water and brought it over to her. I told her that I couldn't help but overhear the conversation and was very sorry for her situation and asked if she would like us to help. I informed her that if he was keeping her from getting to her things, we could call the police and have them force him to hand over her things so she could leave if she'd like. Or if she wanted to let her mom and sister pay for a room, we'd be happy to give her a low rate in a room very far from him. She thanked me, took the water, and tried to calm down and talk to me about what all was happening and what her options were. Eventually, we decided on her staying in the hotel for the night and figuring out the rest in the morning. As we make it to the desk, she asked me to try to run her credit card to see if it has enough on it for another room. I ask her what she means by another room, and she tells me that she's actually paying for the room that he's in. That his name is on the room because he booked it, but it's her card paying for everything. This intrigued me. I asked why she was paying for the room if it's in his name. She told me that she's the one with a job, not him. That he hasn't been able to find a job in his field since graduating from college and is essentially living off of his parents' money. But just after they started dating, his parents cut him off, so he's been living off of her money. That's why she was so upset and confused by how he had been acting all night. He was sweet and doing everything for her back home, but since he met up with his friends, he did a 180 and hasn't been the same guy the entire time. I wanted to tell her that it was obvious that he was using her for her money, and that he would probably blame his friends for all of this and try to get back with her later on. But I doubt that she would have listened to me, or cared for a complete stranger to butt in on a personal life like that. So, instead, I offered up a sweet piece of revenge. I informed her that, considering that she's the one paying for the room, if she can confirm that it's her card on file with some sort of photo ID and verify the last four digits on the card, then she could, if she wanted to, kick him out of the room and keep it all to herself. But considering how poorly her night has been, if she were indeed able to prove that she's the one paying for the room, then I'd be more than happy to provide her the biggest luxury upgrade we offered at our property. The largest suite we had, a full hotel amenity access. I'd even have my coworker fish out a bottle of champagne and some fresh strawberries to have sent to her room, all free of charge. She was taken aback by the offer and was very sincerely tempted, and she looked like she was about to say no. Then I told her that since she would be upgrading her room, that would require that she move things from her old room into her new one. Which means the room that she's currently listed in would need to be vacated immediately. If anyone were to remain in the room after we demanded it be vacated, we were required to have them escorted off the property or they pay for the room. Their choice. She then thought about it, pulled up her card's banking app and showed me the screen. It had a photo of her, her full name, the card's full number, and the charge from our hotel for the room. She asked if that worked, and it was good enough for me. I quickly upgraded her, moved everything over in the system, and before I could say a word to my coworker, he was already grabbing a set of master keys, a bell card, and was asking her what her luggage looked like since he would be the one retrieving it to deliver to her room. He didn't want her to have to deal with her ex again. She smiled and told him which ones were hers and that she hadn't unpacked yet. My coworker runs down to the elevators and up to fetch her things, while I make her a new set of keys and send her off to her new room. Once she's on the elevator, my phone at the desk starts ringing. It's the ex-boyfriend, and he's very angry about why my coworker has entered the room and is taking her things. I calmly explain that I can't give out the private information of any of our guests, and that if he would like to remain in his room, he'll need to pay for it, as there's no longer a method of payment on his room. He blew up. He starts making a ton of demands, and at the same time, yelling at my coworker to stop what he's doing. But it's obvious from the way that he's yelling at my coworker that my coworker isn't listening to him. I can even hear the guy's friends tell him to chill out and just pay for the room. I then explain that we'll give him a courtesy 10 minutes to make a decision. At which point, if he doesn't have payment ready, then he must vacate the building. Or we'll be forced to call the authorities and have him evicted. He continues to yell at me. He screams, swears, threatens, and yells for a solid minute before taking a breath. 
<laughs> I then tell him that he has nine minutes remaining and asks if he's come to a decision yet. He hangs up on me. Nine minutes later, I call the room and he doesn't answer. I call again, no answer. I call a third time. He picks up, then immediately hangs up. I call the police and tell them what's going on, and they say they're on their way. The officers arrive. I tell them what's going on. We go up to the room together, and the man and his friends are all white as ghosts when they see the cops. The cops explain to his ex-boyfriend and his friends that they're being evicted. The ex-boyfriend starts trying to talk to me, but the cops stop him and tell him to only talk to them. The friends are all offering to pay for the room at this point, and the cops look to me and ask if that would be acceptable. I smile very sweetly and say, nope, and the cops nod and start rushing all the guys to grab their things and leave the room. The ex-boyfriend is the last one out the door carrying his two bags and complains that he hasn't even been given a luggage cart to carry his own things. His friends all look pissed at him. I go with the officers to escort them all out the building and I run into my coworker in the lobby. He waits until they're all outside in the parking lot and tells me the woman is in her new room, loves it, and said no to the champagne. She just wants to sleep. I didn't get to see her before she left town the next day, but the ex-boyfriend did try calling our hotel to complain a number of times and even tried leaving some bad reviews of us online and lied through all of it. I hope that she never has to deal with him again. This guy was so used to manipulating his girlfriend that he thought he also could manipulate OP because OP's a girl. But surprise, surprise, OP's used to dealing with douchebags like this guy and has the cops on speed dial. What did he expect? That she was just going to give him a free room just because he was angry? Our next Reddit post is from ae 2 a After graduating college, my girlfriend and I moved to a new state where she was accepted into an engineering program. We found a lovely garden apartment style complex that advertised 100 Mbibbup's internet speed included in the price, among a few other amenities. When we met the property manager, he seemed strict but well-mannered, nothing out of the ordinary. Until we signed the lease. The first problem. Suddenly, walking into his office wasn't allowed without an appointment. I'd come by to ask a question, saw him browsing social media, and figured that he was as available as he made himself to us when we first came by, unannounced to view a model apartment. Nope. He refused to answer my question and asked me to make an appointment via email. The second problem. The terms of our lease included a form that we were to complete within 48 hours of accepting the keys that details all the problems with the unit. We submitted the form via email around the 40th hour. The property manager responded that the terms recently changed from 48 hours to 24 hours, and since we had passed the 24 hours, we would be held liable for all found damages. When citing our copy of the lease, which explicitly stated 48 hours, he informs us that we signed an outdated copy and would need to make an appointment to come by the office and sign a new lease. The third problem, the internet speed was not 100 Mbibbups as advertised. It was less than 15 Mbibbups off peak and about 5 Mbibbups on peak. We again contacted the property manager to complain, but were told to make an appointment. The fourth problem, we made an appointment to address the previous three problems. During this meeting and after I finished voicing our issues, the property manager leans forward and says, there are other communities in this neighborhood that may be more accepting of people like you and your girlfriend. You're welcome to break the lease and leave. People like you and your girlfriend? I thought that he was referencing our personalities, but my girlfriend believed that he was speaking about our skin colors. Her, a black woman, and myself, a white man. My girlfriend jokingly told me to check my privilege before getting serious and explaining to me that we were experiencing discrimination at the very least. The solution. I did some research and discovered the property manager worked for a larger organization that owns several complexes throughout the country. I found their director of human resources on LinkedIn and made a connection. I then emailed her copies of all email correspondence, screenshots of the lease, pictures of the internet speed flags advertised by the road, and more screenshots of online speed tests. We further noted the property manager's comment and the implications behind it. The human resources director replied within a few hours and promised us she would look into the issue. About two days later, the property manager called us and asked to come by his office at our convenience. We showed up near the end of the day and sat down across from him. He then proceeded to ask us if we would be willing to write a letter stating that we accepted his apology, despite not yet offering an apology. And in return, he would credit us a month's rent, accept our damages attachment, and promise to have an ISP on site within a week to assess the internet issues. We declined. 
He got personal with us and revealed his job may be at stake and asked us to reconsider. My girlfriend leaned forward and said, There are other communities in this neighborhood that may be more accepting of people like you. You're welcome to leave. The property manager was replaced in a week with a super sweet older woman who not only gave us all the things the original property manager had promised, the one month credit, accepting the damages attachment, and then further scheduling maintenance to fix said damages having the ISP assess and upgrade the internet to promise speeds, but she also made it clear her office was always open for anything we may need. I looked up the old property manager about a few months later on LinkedIn. Still unemployed. It's worth mentioning that I don't really know what his situation might have been in that specific apartment, but some property managers get to live on the apartment rent-free. So potentially, not only did this guy lose his job, but he also lost his home. That was r slash pro revenge, and this is r slash puppy bloopers. She then thought about it, pulled up her cards. Yes, can I help you? You got a toy? Once she. Uh... <laughs> Come on, man. And that. If and that if he would like to remain in his room, talk. <laughs> you go, come on. Come on, man. All right, for real, I'm finishing the sentence. Okay, I need four seconds, hold on. And that if he would like to remain. And that. <laughs> and. <laughs> and that if he would like to remain in his room, he'll need to. And that if he would like to remain in his room, he'll need to pay for it. As. And that. And that if he would like to remain. <laughs> and. <laughs> and. And that if he would like. 